okay, this one's kind of been a long time in the in the coming after since there was the the final deletion, and then shortly after there was the Battle of the Compound, which then made a lot of people discuss how these two characters were kind of riffing each other the whole time. And then, of course, online, they also commented about how they exist, which irritated people in the back office of one of them. So if you don't know the Broken Matt Hardy story, um, Matt, how can I describe Broken Matt Hardy? After he was big money, Matt, he lost some matches to Jeff and then just went delightfully insane. Or eccentric. It's hard to tell. He started cutting these really bizarre promos. Kind of, if you ever watch the Matt Hardy show, it's like that sort of really highly inventive, crazy sort of character promos. Which then eventually led to him battling Jeff in the final deletion. Which is this so bad, it's good, over the top. You know, he attacks Jeff with vanguards, which is essentially drones. He had to have his gardener, Senor Benjamin, prepare the field for massacre. He used a dilapidated boat. They used fire and Roman candles, and it was... it was spectacular. I haven't seen Delete or Decay. I will be watching that shortly. Ironically, if I watch that and do my, a pure, pure reaction video, TNA will hit me again. Notice I'm Bray Wyatt, the Eater of Worlds. A guy who began as a charismatic cult leader with a bunch of mountainous men who walked with him. And then they broke them up. And then they brought them back together and actually made this powerful, dynamic force, and then they lost a match. And then they did nothing with them. Ironically, he's a character who, when his music hits, he's portrayed differently. The crowd still seems to care, even though he's been booked like hot garbage. So here we go. The Eater of Worlds. The Broken One. Now, it's just these two guys. There's no Brother Nero. There's no King Maxwell. There's no Senor Benjamin. There's no Braun Strowman. There's no Blue Carper. There's no Eric Rowan. There's no Vanguard. There's no Rocking Chair. There's no Dilapidated Boat. There are no Fireflies. There's no Lantern. It is just these two guys. One ring. And a crowd. Now, I do these, of course, through a different set of criteria. I can't do, like, the comic ones. They don't have energy projection. Or, they don't have true energy projection that they've done without special effects. So, we have strength, speed, endurance, toughness, striking, now we get the physical abilities, striking, grappling, submissions, high flying. And then we get into the psychology part. Over with the crowd, uh, ring psychology and mic work. So, we'll get right into this. Strength. Let me just move on over here. Move over here. Strength. No problem giving this one to Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt is a significantly larger individual. And if you look at their two styles, he's a bigger, stronger, brawling individual. That having been said, Matt definitely does have an advantage when it comes to speed. You know, he's not a big guy. He's more of a fast brawler. Endurance. This one, going to give it to Bray. Now hear me on this one. There's about an eight year age difference. Matt is, I want to see he's, well, I can either do that or I can just, this is the problem when you don't do notes. It's that you're kind of stuck having to actually look some stuff up on the fly. Initially I thought I had this memorized and the being that I did not. So, not a problem. Again, I do this as a live feed. Matt, 41. I knew Matt was 40. I wasn't sure if he was like 39 or 40. Bray Wyatt, 29. So we have a 12 year age difference. I knew it was like an 8 to 10. I was like somewhere like 9 to 10 years age difference. So a 12 year age difference. That's really, really going to play into how well this match goes in the long term. Toughness. Now, hear me on this one. Matt's been doing this for a long, long time. Matt's been through some ridiculous wars with the Dudleys. He's gone through tables. He's been beaten with ladders. He was in the E back when E was very violent. You know, when you watch the match for, for Final Deletion, 
they do go back with Roman Candles. If I'd left it about, but still, he's got a tremendous, tremendous ability to absorb a huge amount of pain. Striking. We gave us to Bray. Well, they both have very good punches. Bray has got a clothesline that can dang near take your head off. Graveling. You know. Neither they really do anything in the way of grappling. You know, you don't see anything more than like you know, standard suplexes. Bray no longer does his his uh, his suplex into a standing in, like a scoop slam. He doesn't do that anymore. The closest thing I got for Matt Hardy would be something like the side effect. Both of them are, I would say for this one, they're actually pretty equal. So we will go with Wise. Submissions, they don't use any. High flying. That's Matt. Matt leaves his feet. Bray does not. Over with the crowd. Mm. You know, Bray gets a pretty sizable pop. But with the right crowd... I mean, if you watch uh, SummerSlam, you heard the crowd chant delete... A little bit when the when the when they showed the really horrible red title. I'd probably say for this standpoint, I will give over with the crowd to Matt Hardy. If anything else, if his music were to hit and Matt Hardy breaks through that curtain on his way to the ring, the crowd's gonna go nuts. He'll have like that that like Dudley Boy pop where it's like, oh my god, someone's here from the exit area. And if he comes out and he does his current shtick, I think the crowds, well, if it's a smarky enough town, they're going to explode. Ring psychology. Now I'll come back to that one. Mic work. You know, Matt has done some phenomenal vignettes, but I don't think we've got anything that comes close to as the Bray Wyatt does. As you right now, we are tied up. We are four to four. Now it comes down to ring psychology. Who does a better job when it comes to ring psychology? Man. This is a hard one. Broken Matt now is a really, really strong dynamic character. And he's biting people now, too. And he plays this eccentric, crazy individual very, very well. But on the other side, Bray Wyatt is an absolute master at what it is that he does. I don't think my opinion works well enough, so I will actually give it to, to Bray, and here's why. Jake the Snake Roberts has said that Bray Wyatt will never be will never be one of the great heels in the company because he's too good at what he does. But being too good at what he does encapsulates everything. That is his ring psychology. It is his mic work. It is what is it he does inside those ropes, outside those ropes. His character is virtually perfect and so unique. Just the E has no idea what to do with him. So I think if you have a match between Bray Wyatt and Broken Matt Hardy, then at the end of the day, the Eater of Worlds let the Broken One follow the Buzzards. Or maybe he's trying to just delete him. And have his Buzzards destroy the battlefield. So out of those two, that's what I gotta go with. I think that Bray has an advantage when it comes to his, his current style. He's got 12 years of by not being as beaten up. And his character is hit a point where it's he doesn't need titles. He's a book like garbage, but he's still over. And he still comes off like a threat, regardless of how horribly he's been booked.